Today we're converting a Trisnik, that is a, a TRS NIC, or a Retro Store card, as it's also known, into a Tris IO, TRS-IO. So there's instructions for the physical things that have to be done, uh, modifications to this card, on um, a couple of uh, GitHub repositories, one being Pete Satinsky's, who has the Trisnik pieces, and Arno's archive on uh, Tris IO. So these are all on GitHub, so basically what I have to do with this is I have to apply a bunch of bodge wires to the back of this thing. And what you can probably tell here is that I have marked out the various pin numbers for reference on the back of the card. Um, this way I can just make it easier to get my orientation, because what you can notice here is the what you can see here is um, the notches for the three smaller, the gal, and the other two supporting chips are uh, to the left, the notch of the microcontroller is to the right, so pin one is oriented differently. So we're going to put on the bodge wires, and then we're going to get into the next two steps, which are to reprogram the gal, and then we're going to reprogram the microcontroller. And so the bodge wiring job that we're going to be doing can be seen here, and in fact there is a... I apologize that the screen looks a little funky. Um, it does look a lot funky. There's a table right there on, this, on the page that shows you everything you need to know about where to jump them. So, and there's a diagram. So, anyway, um, so what we're going to do first is I'm going to warm up the soldering iron. I have my solder and my wick in case I bridge anything. I've got the board already marked out. So the first step here is while I'm waiting for the soldering iron to warm up, I'm going to remove the gal and the other two support chips. All right. I apologize for the funny angle here. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a picture of this card so I know that I make sure I put the chips back together in the exact place they were. So here we go. Okay, and this way I can be sure that when I reinstall everything, I get the right ones in the right places. Actually, I think those other two. Okay, so we're going to remove these. Just use this little pick and just kind of pry them up gently on each end. Just rock it gently. Out she comes. Okay. Oh, and by the way, we have our requisite frosty adult beverage, as often happens in my videos. We'll just enjoy that now. Mm. This is the end result. So I think if I had it to do over again, um, I might wish that I had slightly smaller gauge wire, but actually it worked out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I did cut these a little long, but that made it easier for me to tin them. And pre-tinning them, I think, really helped me a lot here. I just apparently forgot how to do this on the last pin, wouldn't you know? It? And I was a dumbass, and I should have done this one first, um, and I wasn't letting look ahead. So. 
No harm, no foul. I managed to do it without undoing any solder joints or bridging any others. So I think we are now to the point where we're going to turn off the soldering iron and clean it up. And then we're going to program the gal. And then we're going to walk through the process of programming the microcontroller. Time to program the gal. So what we have here, I have the GAL programmer software up on my laptop, and if you follow the cable around the Gatorade Model 4, I have my GAL programmer, and here I have the GAL. So I'm just going to insert this with the notch aligned as so, and close her in. Okay, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to clear the buffer. And then I'm going to, I've already backed up the existing programming. So um, did this kind of pre-step just so I could make sure that I had a backup copy of it. And this is the JED file as found on GitHub. So I'm going to open that. And I'm going, I've already got my correct device selected here, ATF16V8B. That's the device part number printed on the device and I'm going to program it. And I'm going to program it. That's it. Okay, so now we remove the gal and we reinsert it into its home, making sure to line up the notch with the board. Okay, are we lined up? I believe we are. Notch and notch. Okay, yes, we are. Okay, good. And that's it. Okay. So the gal is programmed. Now it's time for the micro channel. Oh, the micro channel. Yeah, IBM micro channel. Yeah, 1989 called. Uh, it's time for the microcontroller, the ESP32S. This is not so simple. It's not difficult, but it's got a much greater process. So I'm going to set the camera up on the tripod. I'm going to walk you through the basics of it, but this will not be a complete step by step how to. Um, even reading the doc on the GitHub site, you, you know, the various GitHub pages for both um, Pete and Arnaud, you learn that, um, or you know that there's, there's some prerequisite experience that kind of comes with this. So I'm going to blast through it. This isn't meant to be a tutorial so much as just the overall steps I followed to get it to work. Uh, the Trash Talk podcast, um, that's, by the way, what really got me interested in this. I all of a sudden saw that this thing could not only do all the cool network stuff that it did when I bought it, but it also could emulate a FRED and do some other cool disk I.O. stuff that would save me buying a second FRED, but I would also get the benefit of all the network stuff. And uh, being able to play with managed disk images on my network just seemed really cool. So that's why we're all of a sudden doing this. These projects are like one after the other. It's like a waterfall of projects. I just find one thing and keep following the breadcrumb trail to the next giant mess. So I've already built ESP IDF. I've already done this. So I'm going to source this file so that I can have all my environment variables in place. Okay, so now I'm going to CD TRS IO. Oops. And I'm gonna make clean just to make sure that we don't have any what's out there. We are cleaned. All right, so now I'm going to make, and this shouldn't take too long. And we have a successful, we have a successful uh, flash. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to take this microcontroller out and we're going to plug it into the system that's actually running this VM. And then we're going to come back in here and run the command to flash it. So we have our controller. And I'm just going to connect it to the USB port on this power edge here. This power edge is one of my two ESX servers. So it's running the VM that we were doing the compilation on. And uh, yes, I could do VMs on my laptops, but I prefer to do it off here where I can keep all of my development environment VMs out in their own little land. And I have templates on here to just spin up one real quick. So, all right, so I'm gonna put the laptop in here and we are gonna program this now. Controller's plugged in, as you saw. Now it's time to flash it. Now, before I flash it, and uh, by the way, I can tell you, the, uh, it's attached to the VM in question. So you might say, well, you plugged it into the host, but how to get attached to the VM. I went in to edit settings and I just attached it to the VM. Once you do that once, every time I connect this device to this ESX box, it will attach itself to this VM unless I remove it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to erase the flash entirely. I have to push the button here to do this. Get the button to push. There it goes. 
You have to hold the button until uh, it starts scrolling again and then it will work. If you just click the button once, it won't work. Okay, we are, f we are done. The thing restarted now. I'm going to take this command, but I'm not going to run it yet because I need to change the serial port from this dev TTY S4 business to tev TTY USB 0. All right, so this should be it. Um, the rest of the command was generated for me by the make file. All I changed was the serial port. Let's give this a run and see what happens. We've got the serial port. I'm going to hold the button here. There we go. Now it's going to flash. While it's flashing, I am beering. And there it is. The device is programmed. I'm going to give it a second here. And now what we're going to do is take this back, put it into the board, and power it up and see if we can get it connected to the network and connected to the Samba share I've created up on my Synology. We're back with our board and our newly programmed microcontroller, our bodged board. Here we go. So we're just going to insert this in here. I'm going to put it in the socket, make sure it's pointing in the right direction, make sure all the pins line up. Looks like they do. In they go. Okay. The next step with this is to connect it to power. And then we'll see if we can get my laptop to join its Wi-Fi network and configure it. I've plugged it in and the TRSIO network showed up, so we are now connected to it. So according to the documentation, I should be able to go to trs-io.local and get this to work. If it doesn't, we'll look up the IP address or something. I can't type from this angle. trsio.local. There it is. Look at that. trsio.local. So now we've entered everything in here. I've got a Samba share I've set up on my Synology and created a dedicated user that can't do anything else. So we're just going to submit this and hopefully it's rebooted. Now this is never going to come back. So what I have to do is connect to my regular Wi-Fi network and then try and connect to it on the network. So that's what we're going to do. And I've already fallen back to my other network, so... Yep, there it goes. Perfect. Okay. Uh, for some reason, it did not like the name. It wanted the IP address, so that's fine. Um, but there we go. It's connected to Wi-Fi and SMB. So theoretically now, I should be able to drop a Fred Brom and uh, my disk images from my Model 4 up to there, up to my Synology share, and have it work. So let's try this. Okay, there we go. So these are various images that are there. And I should have already open. There we go. So I'm going to drop these files into the share. Now that the files are copied, it's time to connect this to the TRS-80 and see if it even works. Okay, we're plugged in. Um, I did get a green light on the uh, now Tris IO, hopefully connected right. So what happens if I power the Model 4 on? Look at that. That's the Fred Boot menu on my Tristic. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. So let's do LS DOS 1 3 games. Oh, that did not work. Okay. That came up. It's loading from the network. What's interesting, though, is when I do that, it just goes to Model 3 mode. So this may be a little interesting. This is the Model 4. What happens if I hit LDOS just for the sake of my own curiosity here? It is coming from the network. Yeah, so something ain't right. Well, we're back, and though things look much the same, it's actually a very different day. Um, it's been a while, so we'll just say October was not kind to me. So this is my uh, Trisio slash Trisnik with bodge wires and all. And I have been testing it on my Model 4 non gate array, but and it, mainly I did that because that has the boot ROM in it. So it's got the modified C ROM for Fred. But there's a basic program you can type in to pull down the Fred ROM and execute it and then be able to boot the device from the FRED or FRED emulation on Trisio. And so I pulled that program down and am now ready to run it. What ended up happening was very stupid. So I checked every single pin and wire and reflowed solder and had the meter out and I was testing to make sure I hadn't bridged any solder joints, make sure that I hadn't that I had connectivity between the top of the pins in the socket and the corresponding wire below. Everything checked out, so I was just going completely apeshit. 
And then I got reading that this device does not like to access folders that are down more than the top level of a share. So, for example, if you had, you know, whack whack computer name, whack my share, whack TRS-80, that wouldn't work. Um, but if I did whack whack computer name whack TRS-80, that should work, which is what I did. And when you saw, if you were paying close attention, you'll know what I already changed. I'm sorry, this looks kind of terrible. Um, but when I named the share, I used a hyphen in TRS-80. And the directory didn't tip me off to that specifically, except to say that I realized that, like many things, this probably was a little finicky. And so what happens if I take out the special character? So I did. So now that I've done that, we're going to give this pro program a run. It's just copying the contents down to RAM, and then we're going to run it. Yes, I'm aware I could append two lines to the basic program to make it run, but this is actually less typing. Okay, now I have my Fred boot menu. It's pulling the ROM images from the network. And I'm going to run LSDOS. And there we are. It boots. It works from my files over the Synology, um, to, to say the least, I was pulling my hair out on this, absolutely going nuts, trying to figure out what the hell happened. Um, one thing that was throwing me off was on a Tris I.O. card, the little LED here, not the one on the, the PIC, but here, around the microcontroller, says it should be off. Um, this one is on. It does go solid green when when it boots up. So I'm not sure what that is, but I couldn't tie it back to anything, and I imagine if I bridged something somewhere, this wouldn't be working. So I'm not sure why that is. Um, I may still have made a mistake, and I'll find it when something goes haywire, but the thing actually does work. It's now loading basic from over the network, and there it goes. Um, and I know this project is kind of early and, you know, earlier in its stages, but it's damn cool um, to be able to load hard drive images on a non fred enabled model 4. Now this is a gate array machine so the modifications necessary to make a fred boot rom work are possible. They do require soldering, they are undoable. Yeah, it's not that I'm against it, but <clears throat> I prefer to modify these as little as possible to be brutally honest. So um, this is my only gate array model 4, so I really don't want to screw with it. Um, but anyway, so that's really it. This is very cool. It uh, seems to work quite nicely. And uh, I've, so far it's been pretty pretty uh, flawless there, so I think I have Deskmate on there. Um, DM. Oh, yep, there comes Deskmate. Initializing, please wait. Thursday, November 12th, 2020. So, that's it. Um, it did work. The solution was just one of those little finicky things, so if you're creating a share for your Tris I.O., um, at least if it's one of the bodged um, tr Trisnik or uh, Retro Store cards, um, you can't use a hyphen in the share name. I don't know if that is a limitation of the Fred ROM or if it is a limitation of the software on the controller or what. I have no idea. But that was my own experience. Now that I've put that out there, I'm sure someone else will have another experience where a hyphen works. And Yep, that's probably the way it's going to go. So anyway... Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate all the viewers. And until next time, take a sip of whiskey, stay classy, and we'll catch you in the next video.